Welcome to episode 7 of Art to Heart podcast where we explore the inner landscape of our lives. I'm your host Rana and today we are diving into a transformative topic of how to master the art of solitude. Whether you are seeking quiet moments in a busy world or looking to deepen your self-understanding, solitude can be a powerful ally. One of the reasons why my podcast is named as Art to Heart is I often relate that my art is directly the reflection of how my heart is feeling on the day. And also, you mastering the art of solitude is kind of an extreme level of your empowerment. So let's deep dive into this. As someone who considered myself as an introvert, it's very difficult to explain to people why I require a quiet moment in my day-to-day life, even though I may be surrounded by myself, by my loved ones or by the people or even by going to a mer- uh, just going out for a family function, my energy might be drained out. And I think majority of the introvert can actually relate to this of how our energy casually drains out without even understanding and that we need a lot of time to recharge and how solitude can actually make importance whether you are introvert or whether you're extrovert whether you're someone who's going to the first chapter the first chapter of your life whoever you are but i think having that mastering having to master the art of solitude is something does not come in a day but actually it comes developing it or improving day-to-day basis and then eventually leading it to uh, mastering the art of solitude itself so let us understand what solitude or what is the difference between solitude and being lonely and being alone and all this thing. So solitude is often misunderstood in our hyper-connected world. Being alone can feel daunting, but it is essential for personal growth, creativity and also emotional well-being. Today we'll unpack what solitude really means, its benefits and practical tips to embrace in our daily life. Let's deep dive into understanding what solitude really means. Solitude is a state of being alone without feeling lonely. It's about creating space for introspection, creativity and self-discovery. Many people conflict solitude with loneliness. Loneliness is a painful experience while solitude can be nourishing one, thinking of it as a way to recharge your mental batteries. If you happen to listen to any of the podcasts by Modern Wisdom or Huberman or anybody else, they always talk about one of the chapter, which is lonely chapter, to develop yourself into the person you're going to become. I think uh, one of the things we talk about is Iman Ghazi here, who talks about my future kings and queens. We have to go through this chapter. We have to put your head down, focus on the thing you want to do. And all these things are going to be able to achieve only during the period of solitude or only the during the period of lonely chapter i think there are people who are comfortable with being alone themselves than to be in a crowd full of fake people and i think to understand the today's world scenario of how we are feeling like and it is not easy for us to explain why we need a much needed solitude time for us rather than explaining to them like no we actually need a period of time to recharge ourselves physically and mentally but it is more of a mental process of recharging yourself when you actually block yourself in your calendar saying this is a period of time for my solitudeness it's actually a time for you to focus on self development self improvement or you can actually develop your physical mental capacity of yours and i think i uh, i was listening to a podcast of alex amerzy and chris williamson where they talk about lonely chapter which is so beautifully explained that like you actually break through yourself during the chapter of your life where you have no distraction where you have no desires where you have nothing and also you may consider this as a monk mode but actually it is more of a lonely chapter in your life and why do we need solitudeness in each and every day of your life is to just get out of our regular mundane task and have this extreme focus of a period of even for half an hour of our life where we can develop mentally and where we can accomplish the thing which we are not able to do so far in our busy world let me talk about the four benefits or the key reason 
to embrace solitude and take the best out of it one is definitely self reflection like i talk about blocking the time period in your day and then just focusing on improving improving your mental ability so solitude provides the opportunity to reflect on your thoughts feelings and experiences this can lead to greater self awareness and clarity the number two it is definitely creativity boost so many artists and writers have credited solitude as a source of inspiration when distraction fade creativity can flow freely as someone who is a part of content creation and as a illustrator i definitely block a period of time in my life where i'm just like no i have to put my head down finish this illustration share it with my much needed subscriber or people who are supporting me because they do enjoy this process then number third comes in emotional well-being this is something very important not much of us talk about how emotional well-being is very much important as physical well-being time alone can help you process emotions and reduce stress it also it also allows you to check in with yourself and your needs and once you have already practiced developing this self reflection creativity boost emotional well being obviously will be on the fourth bit which is improved focus in solitude you can concentrate better on task whether it is reading writing or simply being present yesterday i happened to be a part of productivity lab by ali abdul where he talk about all this thing like it is a quarterly revision or a yearly revision he was asking some question to us where we have to write down what is the three thing you are looking for for the next quarter or the last 100 days of this year because yesterday marking yesterday uh, i think it is now today we are on the 99 days left more for this year to complete and he was asking what does we want to accomplish what have we done so far what is the greatest achievement so far for this year or so far for the quarter or what are you happy about what are you sad about i think those thing comes part of productivity and also when i was listening to that entire session i happened to stumble upon solitudeness and i'm just like yes it is actually true and i kind of practice this on my daily life of blocking myself a calendar of time like this is my illustration time this is my editing time this is my upload time and i kind of enjoy this process only when i put my head down and not distract myself through anything so i thought i'll share this with you on today's week so that in upcoming week you may actually practice this and find yourself in better place So once you start practicing the act of solitude in your day-to-day -day life you will actually see these benefits in you but how are you going to practically embrace this thing in your life like how are you going to start mastering solitude so some of the practical tips are create a solitude routine like i kept myself as an example as a illustrator as a content creator i do have a time aside for me at this time i'm going to illustrate so designate designate a specific time each day or week to be alone this would be a morning ritual or evening wind down or it could actually be your afternoon routine after a lunch you have a quick sprint of 10 minutes and then you kind of your brain kind of pumped up for the next chapter of the day and then you can actually close your calendar and say no this is the time i'm going to put my head down read study work or build something best out of you The second thing is actually disconnect from technology. This is absolutely true when you're illustrating, when you're reading, when you're working. I think you are kind of feeling disconnected from technology because you're going to focus only for the period of work you're going to do. Of course if we are constantly working with technology like even if I have to edit my video, I have to do it with my laptop, but the rest all application, all the notification is blocked in my laptop or in my phone for that period of time and I may be in airplane mode at that scenario. so disconnecting from technology is something you can practice at least for half an hour a day so put away your phone and turn off your notifications and embrace the stillness without the constant bust of the digital world like i said the airplane mode is one of the best way you can do to bring the solitudeness in you and to actually find what's best in you and giving that emotional balance of yours is very much important number third is engage in mindful activities so this is easy to be said than to practically evolve yourself but something you can start is definitely try journaling meditating or going for a walk or in our scenario as a creative human being we can definitely scribble around doodle around or paint some few brushes here and there to make it look like an abstract paint this activity can actually help you connect with your thoughts and feeling and it can actually feel like you whatever you, the burden was holding you down is little bit left from your body and you can more feel yourself emotionally well being off than anything else number 4 is definitely explore nature spending time outdoors can 
enhance your experience of solitude. Nature has a way of grounding us and fostering a sense of peace. Exploring nature is, if you are an introvert like me, it's going to be very difficult. But of course, you can pick up small hobbies like being a cactus parent or art, gardening in your terrace or just having a small succulent plant, which is not much to take care. But at the same time, it can survive and actually you can spend some time in the morning or evening. Or you can just place the succulent in front of you, cactus in front of you. Just focus on it and just meditate for a moment of minute or so and you can actually feel better in that scenario or you can just go for a quick run without anybody noticing you to get the vitamin d or you can just be take a piece of paper or a book to read outside and do yourself a favor pick a flower and let it dry in your book that could also help you and number fifth is definitely set intentions before entering your solitude time set an intention what do you hope to gain from this experience? This can guide your thoughts and action. So like I said, you have to have a goal from the solitude. It's just locking yourself, blocking yourself won't help. But at the same time, you having the point, right? You will have certain pain points. You should understand that. And then you have to solve it along the way. It won't solve in a day. It will take a period of time to heal yourself, to get yourself into emotional well-being. I'm not promising you that just by doing these five things, you will actually be doing well from tomorrow onwards. Absolutely not. It requires a period of time to master anything. For many, being alone can be intimidating. Here are some ways to overcome that fear. Start small. If solitude feels overwhelming, start with short period, just 5 or 10 minutes and gradually increase the time. And second, change your mindset. Instead of viewing solitude as a void, see it as an opportunity for personal growth and rejuvenation. And number third is to seek support. Talk to a friend or therapist about your feelings towards solitude. Sharing your thought can help lessen anxiety. I don't think I'll give seek support to go out and so you can rather write it down like in one of the episodes of Art to Heart. I talk about how journaling or writing your feelings down actually help me overcome those extra negative thoughts or something which is in in the head, which is just in the head, but I want it let it out. So seek support. You can actually seek support through you by writing it down in a piece of paper or or writing in an entire chapter of what your brain is saying to you that actually eases the set of things in your head so solitude for introvert may be heaven but the same thing for extrovert will be difficult because you may think it is a lonely chapter of your it is something which is very intimidating but at the same time i encourage whether you are introvert whether you're extrovert you should actually take yourself time of a moment in your life on a daily basis to practice this so that you can see the benefit of it over a long period of time maybe in a week maybe in a month maybe in a year you'll feel yourself as a much different and better person of yourself so these are a few things which I have learned being myself and mastering myself in the journey of solitudeness, in the journey of pro not being procrastinated, doing the best I can, being productivity and all this thing. And I want to end this by saying solitude isn't just about being lonely. It's about discovering who you are in that stillness. I encourage you to explore this art and so see how it can enrich your life. So thank you for being part of today's podcast of Art to Heart. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, share and subscribe. Share with someone who might benefit from mastering solitude. Until next time, take a moment to breathe, reflect and embrace the beauty of being alone. Thank you very much.